Greetings, public reading of Scripture community. Pastor Mike Golay here, Director of Operations. I love what I see. Nice, juicy crowd today. And yes, I saw you, Michal, from Ashkelon. Manishma, zetov, sheyesh lano, Israeli, etzleinu hayom. It's great to have an Israeli with us, hayom, today. And uh, not only that, but we have South Africans. We've got Nederland from Holland. We've got people from California, Mississippi, Colorado. Wow, look at you guys just coming in like a wave, like an army. We have the army of the Lord today coming in to basically listen to Scripture. Public reading of Scripture is just that. We just take the Word of God, chapters from the Bible, and we read them out loud here. No politics, no commentary, nothing like that. Just the pure word of God. And I'm always glad. My partner in Bible reading, Pastor Jeff Kawazo. We love this guy. Let's bring him in. Pastor Jeff Kawazo, UK, United Kingdom. Brother, how are you? Great to see you, Mike. It's always good to be with you, my friend. Always good to be with you. Next week, we're going to be together in Dallas-Fort Worth. We've got our conference. First time we've traveled since March. Yep, yep. Exactly. Looking and forward friends, to I have to say, a uh, very special guest today, partner in ministry, John Riley is coming in right now. John Riley from the American Family Association. Hey, it's good to be with you guys. It is great to have you. John Riley, uh, we have had a great relationship over the past year. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do in the American Family Association. The American Family Association is a ministry that's based in Tupelo, Mississippi. Uh, we've been in existence since 1977. Um, we are here to inform, equip, and motivate people to be salt and light in the culture and to uphold biblical values. Ooh. And uh, I've been with uh, AFA for many, many years, and I'm actually a part of the radio ministry, which now has 200 radio stations across the United States. And uh, so I'm on the air. I also do a Middle East report that's heard on the network as well. So I love what I do. And Love to be a part of that ministry. You sure do love what you do. In fact, your love for what you do made me love you and what you do. And we <laughs> recruited you for podcast intros and outros. Folks, if you have not subscribed to our podcasts on your Apple device, on your Google device, on your PC, go to Behold Israel and you can listen to our teachings out there. And you, the voice that intros all of those audios is right here with us, John Riley, our partner in ministry. So honored to have you with us today, John. Um, I'm going to have, let's jump straight into the, the scriptures. We're going to be covering Genesis 38 and 1 Timothy 4 through 6. We're going to close off 1 Timothy. Pastor Jeff Quazo, will you lead us in prayer that the Lord would just speak to our hearts today? Amen. Amen. Let's do that. Let's pray together. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your word. God, it is alive. It's powerful. And God, you are going to be that lamp to our feet, that light to our path as you speak to us now. And Lord, we want this word to dwell in us richly. And so, Lord, we want to take this on board. We want to be doers of this word, not just hearers only. So as we read today together, may you be writing these things on the tablets of our hearts. So, Lord, we can, just like Ezra, Lord, as he studied those scriptures, he became a doer of those scriptures as well, and then he taught them. And so, Lord, we want to be like that as well. So, Lord, lead us, guide us, direct us. May we be vessels that you can use, fit and equipped and ready for the master. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. As usual, we're using the New King James Version, and uh, feel free to use any version you want, uh, but just follow along. We're in Genesis chapter 38. I'm going to throw that up on the screen here just so you know where we're at, give you kind of an anchor. And this is the story of Judah and Tamar, and we're entering into later on the story of Joseph and Potiphar and all that. But here in uh, verse one, it came to pass at that time that Judah departed from his brothers and visited a certain Adulamite whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua, and he married her and went into her. So she conceived and bore a son and called his name El. She conceived again and bore a son, and she called his name Onan. And she conceived yet again and bore a son and called his name Shelah. He was a, at Chezib when she bore him. Then Judah took a wife for Er, his firstborn, and her name was, you guessed it, Tamar. But Er, Judah's firstborn, was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord killed him. Can you imagine that? And Judah said to Onan, Go into your brother's wife and marry her, and raise up an heir to your brother. But Onan knew 
that the heir would not be his. And it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he emitted on the ground lest he should give an heir to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Therefore, he killed him also. My goodness, did you hear that? Then Judah said to Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow in your father's house till my son Shelah is, is grown. For he said, lest he also die like his brothers. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Now in the process of time, the daughter of Shua, Judah's wife, died. And Judah was comforted and went up to his sheep shearers at Timnah, he and his friend Hira the Adulamite. And it was told Tamar, saying, Look, your father-in-law is going up to Timnah to shear his sheep. So she took off her widow's garments, covered herself with a veil, and wrapped herself, and sat in an open place, which was on the way to Timnah. For she saw that Shelah was grown, and she was not given to him as a wife. When Judah saw her, he thought she was a harlot, because she had her face covered, covered her face. Then he turned to her by the way and said, Please let me come in to you. For he did not know that she was his daughter-in-law. Amazing drama here. So she said, Will you give me that you may come into me? What will you give me that, I, that you will come into me? And he said, I will send a young goat from the flock. So she said, Will you give me a pledge till you send it? Then he said, what pledge shall I give you? She said, your signet and cord and your staff that is in your hand. Then he gave them to her and went into her, and she conceived by him. So she arose and went away and laid aside her veil and put on the garments of her widowhood. Needless to say, this is a very awkward situation, folks. Let's read on. And Judah sent the young goat by the hand of his friend, the Adulamite, to receive his pledge from the woman's hand, but he did not find her. Then he asked the men of that place, saying, Where is the harlot who, has, who was openly by the roadside? And they said, There was no harlot in this place. So he returned to Judah and said, I cannot find her. Also the men of the place said there was no harlot in this place. And Judah said, Let her take them for herself, lest we be ashamed or be shamed. For I sent this young goat, and you have not found her? Where is she? And it came to pass about three months later that Judah was told, saying, Tamar, your daughter-in-law has played the harlot. Furthermore, she is with child by harlotry. Oh. <clears throat> so Judah said, bring her out and let her be burned. Can you imagine, folks? When she was brought out, she sent to her father-in-law, saying, By the man to whom these belong, I am with child. And she said, Please determine whose these are, the signet and the cord and staff. <sighs> so Judah acknowledged them and said, She has been more righteous than I, because I did not give her to Shelah my son. And he never knew her again. Now it came to pass at that time for giving birth that, behold, twins were in her womb. And so it was when she was giving birth that one put out his hand and the midwife took a scarlet thread and bound it on his hand, saying, This one came out first. Then it happened as he drew back his hand that his brother came out unexpectedly. And she said, How did you break through? The breach be upon you. This breach be upon you. Therefore, his name was called Peretz. Afterward, his brother came out who had the scarlet thread on his hand, and his name is called Zera. Let us pause, my friends. I mean, I in some ways, it's difficult to believe this is actually a story in the Bible. Look at the deception. Look at the sin. Look at the chaos. And ask yourself one question. Are we capable of doing that? And if so, can we repent of the things we've done? Have you had a hard lesson of the consequences of sin in your life? And even maybe saying this, that even though sin is knocking at all of our door, we know that in a miraculous way, 
that God can actually use the past to glorify himself in the future. Yes. As you take a moment and listen to the Spirit of God, we're going to go on over to, at this time, 1 Timothy, pick up where we left off last week, 1 Timothy chapter 4. And here, a completely subject change. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Jeff, who's going to read chapter 4. <laughs> Look at what happens in chapter four and compare that with the times that we live in today. I'm just just asking yeah. you to do that. Go ahead, Pastor Jeff. That's pretty pretty relevant, Mike, for sure. First Timothy chapter four. <clears throat> now the spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If you instruct the brethren in these things, you'll be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished in the words of faith and of the good doctrine, which you have carefully followed. But reject profane and old wives' fables and exercise yourself towards godliness. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance for to this end we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living god who is the savior of all men especially of those who believe these things command and teach let no one despise your youth but be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. You know, Pastor Jeff, I like uh, where it says, verse 13, give attention to reading. 2,000 years later, we are giving attention. To reading did you catch that did you see that maybe it me. that was really cool no i saw that I felt like i was doing the very thing it tells me to do I know, it's like yes i'm doing that folks <laughs> this is what it's all about we're just sitting here reading scripture and now without further ado let's get to ver chapter five john riley american family association chapter five first timothy chapter five do not rebuke an older man but exhort him as a father, younger men as brothers, older women as mothers, younger women as sisters, with all purity. Honor widows who are really widows. But if any widow has children or grandchildren, let them first learn to show piety at home and to repay their parents. For this is good and acceptable before God. Now she who is really a widow and left alone trusts in God and continues in supplications and prayers night and day. But she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. And these things command that they may be blameless. But if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Do not let a window, do not let a widow under 60 years old be taken into the number and not unless she has been the wife of one man, well reported for good works, if she has 
brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has diligently followed every good work. But refuse the younger widows, for when they have begun to grow wanton against Christ, they, they desire to marry, having condemnation because they have cast off their first faith. And besides, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and not only idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things which they ought not. Therefore, I desire that the younger widows marry their children, manage the house, give no opportunity to the adversary to speak reproachfully, for some have already turned aside after Satan. If any believing man or woman has widows, let them relieve them, and, and do not let the church be burdened, that it may relieve those who are really widows. Let the elders who rule be well counted, worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in, in the word and doctrine. For the scripture says, you shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain, and the laborer is worthy of his wages. Do not receive an accusation against an, an elder except from two or three witnesses. Those who are sinning rebuke in the presence of all, that the rest may also fear. I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that you observe these things without prejudice, doing nothing with partiality. Do not lay hands on anyone hastily, nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. No longer drink only water, but use a little wine for your stomach's sake and your frequent infirmities. Some men's sins are, are clearly evident, preceding them to judgment, but those of some, but those of some men follow later. Likewise, the good works of some are clearly evident. And, and those that are otherwise cannot be hidden. You know, John, th this is, uh, when you read it all like that, this is, there's some tough words here. I mean, um, from the pulpits, at least in many countries, uh, a lot of, I can see why a lot of pastors want to shy away from this one. But man, straight up God's word, folks. Um, Amen. We know that the word of God isn't always convenient. We know it, it isn't always uh, fitting to our culture and our personal values as people. And um, I guess I can say this. He who has ears to hear, start with me, Lord. Let us hear what these words are. Well, we have one more chapter, and Pastor Jeff is going to close us out with uh, chapter 6, 1 Timothy. Pastor Jeff. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Let as many bond servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and his doctrine may not be blasphemed. Hmm. And those who have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. Teach and exhort these things if anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words even the words of our lord jesus christ and to the doctrine which accords with godliness he is proud knowing nothing but is obsessed with disputes and arguments over words from which come envy strife reviling hmm. evil suspicions useless wranglings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. From such, withdraw yourself. Now, godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through 
with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Christ Jesus who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate that you keep this commandment without spot blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ's appearing, which he will manifest in his own time. He who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, dwelling in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to whom be honor and everlasting power. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. <laughs> Let them do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. O oh, Timothy, guard what was committed to your trust, avoiding the profane and idle babblings and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. But professing it, some have strayed concerning the faith. Grace be with you. Amen. Amen. Let's take a moment, and I want to do something differently in closing this time. Um, this was very concentrated content of truth today. Pastor Jeff, what would be one takeaway from all the passages today? One, just one takeaway that you heard the Spirit of God say to you that you can share with the rest of us. I'm going to ask you that question, John. And then I'm going to ask all you in the forum to post yours too so that we can uh, get that out. What's one takeaway today for you, Jeff? I yeah, it, it's hard to miss what it says about the latter days and where we find ourselves today. And there's one thing specifically, Mike, that, that really struck me because it says there that it's the good fight of faith. But what it's telling us is it's a fight. It's a fight. But it's a good fight. It's a worthwhile fight. It's, a, it's, it's the right fight to be fighting, fighting for the faith and trust in Christ that he's coming back soon. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing, Jeff. How about you, John? One takeaway, just one. Just thinking about all the instruction that was given, if we will follow God's instruction, we will live a, a life that is filled with God's presence and we will be on a solid rock if we just follow his instructions and his instructions are right here in front of us. Wow, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, Annalise, bring on the next week of trouble. Now I'm armed with scripture, nice. Um, seeing some of these comments out there. What did the Lord God speak to you, my friends? Um, that's the question. And what are you going to do? Stay true to the word and all you do. Sylvia, fight the good fight of faith. Lay to, uh, hold of eternal life. Deborah, um, amen and amen. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you for coming to this today. A few more. Um, the smoke, praying for smoky Southern Oregon. May the Lord bless you guys as the fires rage. Be accountable to one another, Susan says. Thank you, Susan Mapes. I appreciate that. Um, stay faithful to God's word and scripture. Amen. People agree with us. Re uh, remove yourself from disputers. Thank you, Martha. Wow, look at all of these great comments. Stay strong in the faith. Eyes on, on the Lord. Um, wow, now it's blowing up everywhere. God is such a loving God and can bring uh, out of evil the good things. Thank you, Glenda. Wow, look at all these. Friends. Uh, this is the kind of participation that we love to see. People from all over the world just simply hearing the word of God, letting the word of God and the spirit of God speak to us so that we have some application this week. Next week, we are going to be in Fort Worth and we're going to be in McKinney at this time next week. Unfortunately, there's no PRS next week. I'm going to miss you guys. And so no PRS next week. 
pay attention to Behold Israel's website, beholdisrael.org, and that's where all of our online events are happening. As we close, John Riley is going to lead us, and then we will adjourn our PRS for the day. Go ahead, John. Thank you. Father in heaven, we love you and we praise you. Today, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word is life. We thank you that your word is strength. We thank you that your word is a solid foundation for our life. We thank you that your word brings healing and deliverance. Your word, Lord, brings comfort. Your word is truth. And Father, I pray for those who are watching and listening today to this broadcast, those that are struggling, those that are burdened down with troubles and cares of this world, God, that they may run to you and they may run to your word because it is there where they find the solid rock and the foundation that they need to do. Pray this in the name of Yeshua, the Holy One of Israel, the one who is our salvation, the one who is our Redeemer, our blessed hope, and our soon returning King. Amen. 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 Folks, I want to thank you for uh, sharing in this beautiful time we had together. The comments blew up. We have people from all over the world. Until next time, it won't be next week, but until next time, Check our web. We'll send out the notifications. Make sure you have our app. That is all for this week. We are signing off. And uh, may we all cherish the word of God this week. Bye for now.